if you're a car manufacturer. Embarking on producing a new estate car for over £20,000, then you've got to make sure that you get it spot on. Because for that much money, you can get one of the top three cars in the field, the Mercedes C, the Saab 95, and the formidable Volvo V70. And this is the new kid on the block, the Rover 75. Now, we already know that the Rover 75 saloon was a winner and helped keep Rover alive, but we also know that there's more to an estate car than making the back square. There's a certain question of style and handling and the big eye for image. Yes, even estate cars have to deal with the image thing. No longer can you drive a car and remain anonymous. They all say something about you. And Rover are hoping that this estate model will say something about one third of all Rover 75 buyers. Now the interior of an estate car is almost more important than that of a saloon. Why, you might be asking? Because of the chances of many, many motorway miles with barking dogs, screaming kids, piles of boxes and nagging partners is very, very high. So you don't want a poor cabin to add to your stress. Identical to the 75 Saloon, Rover have done a great job in here. Don't think that the flimsy, slightly tacky interiors of the smaller Rovers have been emulated. This cabin is worthy of a Jag. Very stylish, very well put together and very well equipped, if a little oldie worldy. Now personally I prefer the interior of the MG ZT. Same layout but no fake wood, no cream dials, it's all aluminium and graphite. Or maybe it's just that I'm too young and trendy to appreciate fake walnut. This car is the 2 litre CDT with an on the road price of £20,700 for the basic model. But I've got four grand's worth of extras on this one, including add ons such as sat nav, rain sensors, sunroof, and a rather nifty parking aid. Now, for me, diesels and estates go pretty well together because high mileage means you need good fuel economy. And with this two litre diesel engine pulling up front, you get in a mile to the gallon return into the late 40s, which is pretty good. Now, this isn't the most rapid diesel car I've ever driven. And combine that with the fact that it's got an automatic box and the pull away is really quite sluggish. But once you're up and running, it's all right. And the gear change is very smooth, very refined. Engineered for comfort, it is great on long journeys and makes a fantastic motorway cruiser. And whilst you wouldn't want to push it too hard on windy country roads, it still remains reasonably composed and shouldn't have any backseat passengers hurling their lunch into the glove box. In the style stakes, I reckon it's another success for Rover. The 75 Tourer does look classy without seeming dated. All the panels roll together nicely and the estate back doesn't look like an afterthought. The external chrome trim is a nice touch, as is this separate boot hatch. I mean, you want to throw things in in a hurry. But what about this boot space? I mean, after all, that is why you buy a car like this. I mean, it's all very well having underfloor storage and securing hooks, but how much gear can you get in here? Now, Rover quote this car as having 1,222 litres of space when the seats are down. But I reckon that litres should be reserved for wine bottles. I mean, what does that mean? So, I've devised a simple test to illustrate just how much space there is in there. The crew that we use carry loads of gear. In fact, they carry loads and loads and loads of gear. And their usual mode of transport is the trusty Ford Galaxy. Not particularly refined, but it gets all their gear and the lads from A to B, no problem at all. So what we want to know is how much of their gear can they fit in the trusty Rover 75? Now that is very impressive and it's obvious that the Rover engineers have been very clever in maximising the amount of space available in here. So there you have it, the new Rover 75. A very competent, very stylish estate car and another huge feather in Rover's cap. 
and flying the flag for Britain, it makes you proud to be British, doesn't it? <laughs>